And we all know that Gillian's smart, but now she's got some artificial intelligence. This microstructure is entirely rigid this way, somewhat flexible this way, and very flexible this way. I'll be finding out why that matters so much and meeting the young inventor behind it who's going to be taking so many industries by storm with this little thing. It's Enterprise Week and Enterprise Week is all about encouraging teenagers and uh, other young people to turn their business ideas into reality. It's organised by the business community but it's paid for by the government and uh, who knows events like this might even produce the next Bill Gates it's certainly some of its hopes well Gillian went to meet one young entrepreneur who spent years studying robotics and used the skills he learnt to start a business making software to create new materials which could be used well for almost anything what do the following have in common a motorbike helmet an aeroplane wing a bone implant and a 30,000 pound chair well the answer is this cutting-edge technology here, which requires no cutting. Each of these objects is made with this ingenious three-dimensional printer at Metropolitan Works in East London, which takes its instructions from artificial intelligence software. Layer by layer, it adds powder, which then solidifies until a three-dimensional object emerges at the end. It takes around one hour to produce one inch of thickness. Siavash Madhavi lives and breathes this technology, having made it the focus of his doctorate, which he finished less than two years ago. Immediately, Siavash, who's always known as Sia, saw the commercial application and set up a company, Complex Matters. In retrospect, his whole education seems to have been building up to this point. Siavash Madhavi, in 2001, took his bachelor's in mechatronics engineering. In 2002, his master's was in intelligent systems or artificial intelligence. By 2006, he'd got his PhD in evolutionary robotics. During the time of his PhD, he published 12 academic papers and was invited to speak at NASA at one of their conferences. He's also very recently been shortlisted as Graduate Innovator of the Year. We create objects from the inside out. So we don't um, think about designing a product and then think you know, whether to manufacture it in stainless steel or titanium and have to compromise our initial design. Instead, what we do is think, OK, this is my perfect design. This is what I want to create. And then people come to us, and we'll manufacture for them their perfect bespoke material for their application. So you make up the material according to the usage of the product. Exactly. So there's no compromise. People say, this is exactly how I want my product to look, whether that's a medical implant, a helmet, a part of, of a airplane wing. And this is an example I have in front of me now. This could, for example, be used in the cushioning for motorbike helmets. So you can create a material that can take in impacts in one axis, but is very rigid or very stiff in other directions. And the whole helmet is very lightweight as well. Now, this itself is something that's never been created before. This material here, you can't go to a material scientist and say, can I have a new alloy, a new metal, a new plastic that behaves like this? They'll tell you, well, you can't do that because if, it, if it's compressible in this direction, it also has to be compressible in the other direction. And are you telling me that no one's thought of this before? Not that we've seen. Um, we've actually, in the past, we've been to conferences where people had the idea of, in the future, being able to design such structures in three dimensions, but only presenting papers of doing things in two dimensions and in simulations. And we turned up with samples like this already and saying, well, look, here's a final product. So it all sounds very smart. But where is this sort of science fiction type product a reality? Well, one application which Sia had never imagined initially was in the art world. Here it's been used to create almost animal-like forms. This organic light was printed in one piece, whilst this virtually flesh and bone chair is constructed from several pieces, as the printer, however intelligent it is, can't produce such large shapes in one go. Together, though, they're allowing designers to reinvent the very meaning of shapes. So in the old days, we used to have wooden chairs upholstered, mm -hmm. and the shape was defined by, by the function by the use. Today, we can actually walk in free space. We can generate anything that we can imagine using that technology. Now, how about the cost of this? Well, it's very expensive. It's around 30,000 pounds. For one chair? For one chair. Um, and why? Because this is the first chair in, in history, probably, to be made 
using this technology, and it's still very slow. <coughs> so to, to produce that, this chair was 70 hours in the machine. And being printed. Being printed, yeah. Slowly, slowly growing like, like a crystal. 30,000 pound chairs are all well and good, but Sears hopes are pinned on more practical and indeed more widespread usage. He's speaking to some of the biggest businesses in aerospace about using the technology to improve the design of planes. George Curry works with the giants of the industry, advising them on engineering issues. He's impressed. Its properties are able to be varied across the unit itself. So in terms of aerospace, we're able to make stronger yet lighter materials to replace existing structures, say wings or fuselage components, and therefore we're able to save on fuel and be more efficient, which is obviously better for the environment. But the applications are far wider than simply aerospace. In the medical world, this could revolutionize how implants are used. Um, because you can imagine a patient coming in and this patient has just broken their leg. At the moment, a surgeon at his disposal has about six different size implants to pick from. So he'll say, should I pick the smaller one? No, it's too small. This one's too big. OK, this one's just right. And you'll put a solid titanium implant in place, which isn't the exact size. What we can do, and this is what we've shown here, is to use MRI scanning to scan the existing bone, the exact bone that's in the patient's body. And by the time they come into A&E, by the time they get into the operating theater, this image has been taken into our software, and our software then will design an internal structure for the bone, very similar to existing bone. Now, Sia, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but you do look quite young. I mean, given that you only finished your PhD 18 months ago, do you ever have problems with people taking you seriously? Well, to be honest, sometimes I wish I had a bit more grey hairs, because when you turn up to a meeting looking quite young, and I think I have quite a baby face, um, you know, people will kind of say, well, OK, great technology. I can see where it's going, but are you really running the show? Um, not sure if I can trust you. And what's your vision for the future? Say in five years' time, where do you think you'll be? In five years' time, I hope to have potentially floated the company on the stock market, potentially AIM or something, and then uh, maybe start something new or potentially retire. At age what? Age, uh, I would be 32. With so much to do in only five years, there's little time for play. But occasionally it's possible to create something that's useless just for fun. And who knows, in the predatory world of business, Sia's latest creation may be a rather good predictor of what lies ahead. And if you're wondering uh, how that computer animation turned out, there it is in uh, real life. Our own working lunch shark generated by artificial intelligence software. It was made by a uh, layer by layer on that 3D printer you saw, all in one piece. And in fact, you could see it on that animation about that goldfish in the middle. The goldfish, I can promise you, is in the middle of that shark, but you just can't see it. You'll just have to take my word for it. There we are. Here's an image of what it actually looks <laughs> yes. like. Now, as opposed to the 30 grand that it cost to yes. make those things, yes. this cost £3, and it was done internally by us. It was done by our editor.